system, and this has been in here since the mid-90s. This is a, um, at the time, a commercial building automation system. Um, so each of these channels control either senses from sensors up in the ductwork or controls actuators. There's a, there are valves and dampers and electrical heaters and also the, the fan variable speed drives and the fan, fan switches, which this thing turns on and off according to uh, software that's on that old computer that we're trying to connect to so I can show you the interface to it. And um, the, the upgrade that we're hoping to do to this room is to, to upgrade this control system. This would be something that could be connected to over the internet. We would recalibrate some of the sensors and we'd tie all this into one computer so that the, the, two, the two systems I mentioned in the room and this system could all be on one computer and, and do some interaction. Because um, right now, this is totally separate uh, from the rest of the systems. All right. Not much to see there, but let's get this computer set up. And then. 224, and they could specify um, what lo a few different load schedule options. So at hour one, you know, say it was 300 watts. In hour two, it was 600 watts. In hour what, three, it was zero. And they go through and they program those inputs and then, um, you know, click submit or something. And it would, would load that into the CR basic code. So maybe it would be a, a chunk of text files that was parameterized and load into the CR basic code. And then that would get loaded onto the logger. And the logger could then control the, the switch relay. Um, so that would be one way to do that. And um, apart from that, right now, um, we probably wouldn't do a whole lot more. They could, we could do things like choose a predictive control algorithm for the low lift system, um, but that's probably somewhere further down the line. Um, and it would be cool if we could teach people how to tune PID loops on the expansion valve or something like that. Um, and then it would be entering a P, an I, and a D gain, and then seeing how the system responds. There's some risk associated with that, so I don't know if we want to do it on the refrigerant loop. Can you limit them? You can limit them, yeah. Um, I have to go. Okay. But somebody has to change the IP address of this machine to this number. Okay, so just change the static IP yeah. on the computer. Yep, uh, we can do that. Yep, see you at um, Other than that, I'm not sure what else we would do in, in Campbell Sci right now. So, um, how do you, like the the text file you mentioned earlier, like right the now? The CSV file, yeah. No, but the one to program the... Oh, yeah. How do you actually do it right now? Like, so, you have to So right now it? it's a fixed schedule. Like, I have within CR Basic, there's a set of the code that specifies... So the, the, the programmable switch relay has 16 channels. Mm -hmm. And I have a schedule that says for hour 0 through 8, this switch is at 0. But that's in the code. Like, it's in the code. That you compile and put yeah. inside. Okay. So what would... What I could envision doing through iLabs is doing, like, let's say they have an interface where, can, where they can specify what that code, what the values should be in that code. Then you'd have a code block that you just insert those values at the right places, and then insert that into the ed log, which is just a text file, and then have CR Basic compile it and send it. Oh. So, so it would be like inserting a text block into a block of, of existing code to mm -hmm. just fill in those blanks and then compiling it. So, you know, it's like I've used MATLAB before to actually write text files and then use that to run Energy Plus, which is a building simulation tool. So it's just like having some segment of code that, that changes based on the program and then sending it. Um, we could talk about that more.